What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Who's Number One. Uh, very excited to be back in here in the studio today. We are joined by none other than Hamala Bahal, world champion, ADCC champion. Uh, just a, a, to, a note before the show gets going, we've had some issues with the internet. Uh, could be a little choppy here and there. I guess there's uh, global outages all over the place. So that's also why the show right now is only on YouTube and our website, flowgrappling.com. With that said, Hamalo, thanks for joining us, man. How are things going out there? How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, you guys, for having me. You know, like, it's a pleasure always. You guys doing an outstanding job, especially on this time that we cannot do much, you know. So looking forward to have a great time with you guys. Thanks, man. I uh, really appreciate that. So we always kind of start the show, I guess, lately, asking how uh, how things have changed, how you're getting by in these tough times. What are you, what are you doing right now? Your gym's obviously closed. What's, what's going on in your life t- right now? Oh, man, you know, like I'm locking down at home, you know, try to keep active, you know, like uh, we're doing some online classes, you know, like, but, you know, like uh, all the online class that we try, we try our best to, you know, to stay busy, to show our students that we care, that we try our best to to give them tools to keep like, uh, you know, like involved and keep learning this time. So I'm pretty much like a home all day, you know, like uh, take care of my family. And then I try to take care of my students as much as I can, you know. So doing some outside activity, you know, like by myself, running, ride bike, you know, mountain bike, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. Would you say that uh, those activities are not quite as fun as jiu-jitsu? You missing the mats a little bit these days? Oh, yeah. You know, like I, I love to be on the mats, you know. Like I've been on the mats for like the past almost like 25 years of my life. And then, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's hard to like, uh, even when I'm injury, I'm on the mats, you know, like uh, I don't take time off the mats. I'm teaching, I'm there watching right now, not being on the gym. You know, I don't know. I don't remember like when is the last time that I stayed that long. You know, it's been almost like a 10 days, you know, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> it's been like a taking forever, you know. So, you know, but it is what it is, you know, like uh, we have to go through those things in our life to actually appreciate. So... I'm just embracing and then try my best to stay, stay positive. Man, um, I guess we could start the show then. You know, we, we sort of uh, we touched base on what's going on today. You're in the same position as many athletes out there. But let's, um, let's look back a little bit. Let's look back at some of the, the highlights of your career. Um, what might stand out to you as your favorite all-time memory from jiu-jitsu? It could be a competition, it could be something personal, it could be getting your black belt, but you know, you, you, you've been around for a long time and you've seen the highs, the highs of the sport. I'm just curious, you know, what, what do you think of when you think of your greatest moment? Man, I have like uh, a lot of great moments, you know, to be honest with you, uh, but sometimes, you know, like people, you know, like, I don't know, maybe sometimes people don't kind of like understand my mindset you know, like sometimes I get argument with my wife and some close friends of mine. Really, uh, you know, like brag about what I have accomplished. You know, like I'm more the person that about like to like point the times that I, you know, that I did the, that I did do the right thing. But uh, as a competitor, I believe the hardest thing for me to accomplish was to win ADCC. You know, so it took me a long time. I was never really good at no gi. I never really focused on no gi, to be honest. You know, all the ADCCs that I competed, I got invited on the last minute. And then I just took my gi out for like a couple of uh, days before the competition. But uh, at one point, I'm like, you know what? I want to, I actually want to win. And I haven't been well for such a long time in no gi, so I want to do well. So as a title, I believe that the ADCC stands out most of like my tires because honestly, world championships, I kind of like, I won pretty much in every belt every year. If I didn't win, I was there on the final, you know, like many, many times in all the belts. So I don't think that I ever competed in a world championship and I have, I didn't medal. So as a comparator, I'll say ADCC, even though it was a, the, you know, like a, the way that people expect you to win and submit everybody, I have a couple of wars and then there was a tough tournament, but on the end of the day, I accomplished a goal that I haven't accomplished, so I'll say that. ADCC probably is the, the title that stands out for me as a as a competitor, so, yeah. Uh, Hamilo, I, uh, 
I prepared uh, some clips to to watch with you today. Did you watch the the knee slide thing that Howell put together? Did you check that out? Oh, of course, man. I watched that probably like 10 times, you know? <laughs> that was that, awesome, you know? That was so. one of the first things I was going to queue up to watch and let you talk about it. Talk about your knee slide while, while they play uh, Howell's little knee slide uh, highlight that he made. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's my move there. <laughs> if you guys had that clip ready there in the back, go ahead and uh, start playing. Oh, man, that when I get my knee point to the floor there, that's pretty much, that's it, you know. I'm going to pass mount, I'm going to choke the, the bottom person, you know. That's, uh, <laughs> I almost never lose that position. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start really using that in your game? Was it from early days in the color belts, blue belts? When did uh, I think I think uh, that, uh, you know, like, I don't know, a lot of people don't know this guy, you know, like uh, Margarida, mm -hmm. Fernando Margarida. It's, uh, you know, like early on 2000, this guy, young guy, you know, came in and, then, you know, beating all the best guys. And then uh, he was really good in the knees, like, you know, and then uh, I really liked the way that he was doing. And then also, I start to do knee cut position because of the percent of the people that used to do half guard, you know. Uh, it was not that many people, you know, and then I'll think like, man, if I get on these people, they just, you know, like if someone half guard, I'll have more chance to pass the guard. And then uh, my school was like only like two guys off, like maybe 200 guys that used to play that used to play half guard. So nobody was in, in a comfortable position when they were there. So I cop a little bit Margarida, you know, like I really like his style. I, I think uh, he wear people down with the knee on the stomach, like a push in, and then don't allow the people to come up on a single leg, stuff like that. So I cop him a little bit, made a lot of, of adjust to my game, you know, like for example, the hand on the collar there. That's something that I have never seen nobody doing, you know. And then uh, I start to do when people not allow me to get my hand off the choke on the collar, you know. So and then hide the back arm. So that's uh, pretty much the way that I, when that I start, you know. And then I believe it was a blue belt, to be honest, you know, because I think that's when I watch him compete, and then I really like his style. So yeah, I would say blue belt. And then over the years, developed so much ideas and then concepts of getting the position, and then it's so natural for me. Right now, you know, it's like uh, right there, for example, you know, I know right there, you know, like he's trying to hide the arm to come up on the single. I put my knee side and I get the hand on the call, the cross face grip, you know. So and then my hand on the belt there is to prevent him to go back with the knee shield, you know, so he can't go back with the knee shield. If he try to go back with the knee shield there, for example, he will open his guard and it will be right open to pass, you know. So it's a it's a lot of it's a lot of, uh, you know. Right there, I pass on the point again, pushing the leg, pass on the point of the knee shield. It's pretty much over if you don't have a half guard right there. You know, if you're not, if you're not Lucas, Lucas Leite or Bernardo Faria or some guys like if they have a good half guard, it, it will be over. You know, I'll pass. Oh, I'll probably pass. I'll probably mount. I'll probably choke the person. You, know, you really need to understand the half guard uh, uh, transitions and then the concept in order to stop the position. Right there too, you know, my hands on the call away, it's just a matter of time, you know, like he's actually turned towards me, giving me the choke. Okay, now he tried to put his back on the ground, but the hand on the, on the call, it's pretty much deep, you know. Just waiting right there, you know, just waiting and then trapping him. See, like he's, again, he's towards me, knee points to the floor, no knee shield, pass the guard. <laughs> So here too, you know, like I think he tried to do reverse de la Riva. Very unlikely to happen with me too, you know. The reverse de la Riva doesn't work because I'm blocking the mechanic of the move, you know. I block the cross face, he can spin under me, and then I hold the pen leg, right? He can also not spin under me. So then I force my knee to point to the ground, pass to the knee shield, and then right there it starts to become really hard for him to go back. Hand on the pants, can go back with the knee shield, cross face, pass the guard pretty easy. You know, so <laughs> this one, I think is Josh Finger, cross face again. He's trying to face me. When they try to face me, then I get the cross grip, the cross hand on the column. And then he, okay, now he's trying to flat his back. Then I get the cross face. I'm going to pass again now. So, Hamala, yeah. what's a, a mistake that a, a lot of guys make when they're trying to use the, the knee, cut, knee size pass? It's a, it's a couple of mistakes, you know. I think the main mistake that people do it, if like, for example, if I have my hand, my right hand on the collar, and then they try to face the knee cut side, 
So pretty much they're going to get choked, you know. So they mm. need to try to move the head away from the position, you know. They need to watch a lot of Shanji Ribeiro uh, diamond concept to understand, you know. Like you try to go towards the leg, you know, like uh, you're going, it's very wrong, you know. That's like when you're probably going to get choked because then you cannot create the space and move your head out, you know. I think this is the the biggest mistake, but also when the hand on the collar is pretty deep, you know, it's very unlikely the person can bring the head back. And then it's a threat also if the person flat the back on the ground without like a get hold of like a deep head guard, for example, because if they do that, then you can go to cut them out and then, you know, it's going to be pretty bad too, you know. It's a very trick position to, to, to deal with, you know, like when uh, the person is good at and then it's, it's a way no knee shield and then a knee on the floor. You know, you really, really need to understand the concepts of the half bar. But, you know, the main mistakes is those ones, you know. Like the first one, it's like right there, you know, like a try to be, face me, you know, like face the knee cut and then pretend that you're going to be able to come up on the single leg, but my knees are way on the floor, very heavy knee. And then, uh, you know, like a, probably that's a high percentage, my high percentage, that you're gonna get choked because my hand's gonna go really deep on the follow, and then uh, you won't be able to actually do like a diamond concept of Shanti Ribeiro to back up and then create the space. Hamilo, you, uh, you seem to, uh, a lot of people really go after that underhook when they uh, knee slide. You, you seem to not even care about getting it at all. You, you prefer to use the, the pan grip with your right hands, huh? Yeah, I, I don't really, you know, like because it's another thing that I change to on the knee cut position, you know, a lot of people focus on the hook. I don't, I don't really mind to get on the hook, you know. I believe that if you have on the hook and you don't have a cross face, you won't be able to pass the guard. Like, for example, I can, get some, I can let someone get me, like, a really deep on the hook, but if they don't control my head, if they don't control, like, if they don't flatten me on my back, for example, especially even on the half guard or side control, you're still going to escape on the position, you know. So I feel the most important thing, especially for the knee cut, you know, like, it's... Uh, make sure that you have a cross face instead of the underhook. That's why, you know, I'm not really focused on uh, on getting the person on the hook. And then you keep, like, underhook the person, the person keep underhook you back, and then whoever wins the, the, this fight, we actually succeed on the position. So I figured that, okay, you get your underhook. Now I manipulate the hips and my knee on the right direction. The underhook doesn't mean much, you know, so he can't go behind my back. You know, you can't, you can't go for the deep half guard. So then I'm starting to get my cross face and my hands on the collar. So I actually allow the bottom person to get the the underhook, you know. So it's a, and then it's a it's a fight that I take a lot of energy of the person, you know. Like uh, that's a cop on the hook, so the person underhook me, and then put the forearm on the ground, and then all I have to do it is point my knee towards the side of the hips, not point the my knee to the side of the knee cut, you know. So then when the person is flat, then I point my knee back, you know, then that's very tiring, you know, so very, very, uh, uh, take a lot of energy of the person. And they, honestly, when I pass the guard on this, like, for example, this highlight, if I get the choke. I, I think we may have Wait, lost it. Homlo briefly. Maybe he'll come back to us there. There he is. Oh, I he's think back. I'm back. Yeah. Hey, if All it stays right. like that, that's yeah. not too bad. Not that's not too bad. Yeah, that, that was quite like a ten minutes at least, a fifteen minutes, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, at what point in your career did you start uh, using the knee cut? Did you use it early on? Were you doing it at blue belt or purple belt, or did you add it later on, like when you were fighting at black belt? I start to use it the blue belt, but I stopped for a while, you know, because uh, at purple belt I only play guard. You know, I barely play top game. You know. Uh, I decided to really focus on my guard, my like my guard retention, my you know my attacks, and then I didn't play top at all on a purple belt, you know. So on the brown belt, then I begin to pick it up again. Then I came back to the knee pot, you know. But I was very versatile, you know, like uh, on a brown belt. I used to do a lot of like uh, long step, knee cut, uh, Toriano, leg drag, you know. So, but then. Uh, you know, like on the black belt, I really focus on have like a really strong game, you know. I can do all guard pass. And then uh, one good thing of the knee cut give to me, it's uh, make the person afraid of the knee cut and give me opportunity for the other pass, you know. But uh, I believe the time that I put a lot of work and it developed like a strong game, it was in the black belt, you know. Like uh, we started the blue belt because of Margarida. And then, uh, you know, like I changed my game a little bit on the purple belt. I really focus on the guard. 
brow belt, I bring back, you know, like a both guard and top, but not so much. If you see like uh, my first year as a black belt, uh, my first couple years as a black belt, two years, for example, I pretty much played bottom game most of the time because I was developing on my training the top game. So 2008, I was injured, I didn't compete. 2009, I came back, a lot of people pull guard on me, and then I dropped, I choked like almost everyone, you know, like of my of my uh, opponents, you know, like when it was 2009, when they thought I only have guard, I surprised everybody with a very, very strong top game, you know, so. That's something that I've noticed a lot. Uh, you said, like, when you were at the color belt, you were only playing guard, basically. I think I, I see a lot of guys when they come to black belt sort of struggle because of that, because everybody's so used to only being able to play guard at purple and brown belt, and then they get the black belt, and then their passing is behind. Do you think that's something that uh, people are sort of neglecting as they're coming up, and that color belt should focus a little bit more on passing? I think especially right now, you know, because of a lot of, uh, you know, like... Uh, you know, like the guard, if you think about it, has way more resource, you know, like you don't see like a lot of people that are really good on a guard pass, but you see a lot of people that watch is good on a, on a guard, right? If you're thinking about the percentage, everybody's talk about guard, 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 and it's not a lot of people that talk about guard pass. If you, if you think about who is the guard, the guys that pass the guard, for example, in the gear, right? Rodolfo, uh, Roger, uh, Jacaré. But not many, you know, like the, most of them are, are Lucas Lab. It's like a guard players, right? So I think, yeah, man, you know, like you really, I think, uh, especially the lightweight division, you know, like uh, the guys that's like, uh, I believe, like a uh, featherweight, uh, light pad, and then, um, and then a uh, rooster weight, you know, like it's, uh, I don't know, nobody that's actually, it's good on the guard pass, you know, like really good that's going to tournament and then win all the match by passing the guard. It's pretty much like a lot of strategic, you know, like a double guard pool, advantage, stuff like that. And then, like, I, I still remember when the first time that I saw Cobrinha competing back in the day on the World Cup, they used to call Copa do Mundo. And then uh, I think it was the first guy that I actually see that featherweight passing guard, doing like a Bravo choke, taking people's back, you know. And then I think he brought something new to the game, and then I think that's why he won for so many years. You know, he has he has a, something different than most of the other guys. You know, which was a guard pass. So I believe you should focus. You know, especially like uh, on the develop, like uh, every belt, you should bring something new to the table. You know, you shouldn't stick with one game because when you get a black belt, you're gonna struggle a lot. You know, so that's what I did. You know, every belt I brought a different game. So even on the black belt. By doing exactly the same thing, I make it just every year, you know, like people expect a grip, then I change my grip. People expect one type of guard, I change the side of the guard. It looks the same, but it was different, you know, so you always need to make it just. And then passing the guard, I think, is something that's missing a lot in jiu-jitsu nowadays on the gi, on the, on the gi and the no gi too, you know, both. Who do you think are some of the best guard passers out there currently that are that are competing right now? Uh, I'll say Lucas Lapri. Uh, I'll say uh, Leandro Law is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> He's very good guard pass, you know. Um, Lucas Barbosa, hook. Um, very good guard, very strong uh, top game. Um, what else? Let me see here. Yeah. Bushesh always been good top yeah. game. You know? <laughs> Can't deny that. Uh, but right now, I think... Bra Braguinha. Uh, Braguinha uh, knee slides, oh, I like oh, you a lot. Oh, he, my God, yeah. He yeah. uses the same type of knee slide as you a lot with the pan yeah, grab. No, Braguinha, yeah, Braguinha, yeah, I almost forgot about I think Braguinha is actually, right now, probably the best one of the of, of a top game, you know, like a guard pass, you know, like... A, he used, like, a couple of same concept, but he, you know, like, a, he passed on the left side, which is very tricky. You know what I mean? It's like a throw a lot of people out. And then, man, I trained with him for like one month. He has a heavy base, you know, very, very hard to sleep, that guy. And then he was only a brown belt, you know. So, yeah, I think uh, Braguinha is one of the best guys right now that uh, playing top game. So he passes to the opposite side of where you would pass. Yeah, he passed to the left. I, he passed to the left and then I passed to the right, you know. Yeah, so he passes. Yeah, you you pass. I knee slide the same way as you. I think most people do. So people are used to defending the knee slide on the side that you go to. He goes to the opposite side. It probably really throws people off, huh? Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. it's very hard, you know. So he's a really good, and then he goes to the opposite side that most of the people play guard, you know. So it's another thing too, you know. Like for example, guard. 
I like to play guard both sides, you know. So even that I have a strong position on both sides, oh, for one side and the other side, but you have to understand because you get a guy like a Braguim, very strong top game, and then that guy go past to his left side, man, it's very hard to deal with. What do you think guard-wise? Uh, what do you think is, is the next big thing in, in terms of guard? We see a lot of lapel stuff out there right now. Do you think there's, there's going to be any old guards coming back or any, any type of uh, – you know, anything uh, new coming, you think? Uh, probably is always something new, you know, but uh, right now it's definitely La Pella Guard is a, tra is a trend, you know. So if you if you look like, for example, you, I always watch like uh, Dream Art, right? Like uh, they, they, they post some videos on a, on a, on a story, you know, the Instagram in the morning. I watch that for like a motivation to go train or they train pretty hard. And then, man, like 90% of the guys, they play La Pella Guard, you know. Lapela, like one lapela, spider lapela, uh, 50 50 lapela. They're using lapela for, for everything, you know. So I believe this is the big thing right now. Not only like a one guard, but using the lapela for all the other guards, you know. So I think this is the, the big thing right now. But I would say that I tell this my students you cannot, like, my two cents of advice for the guard players, and then, like, the guys that I train. Most of them have this mistake. When they don't have the lapel, they have they have no idea how to play guard. You know, don't relate too much on the lapel. You know, like be able to understand framing, be able to understand like uh, that you're gonna lose the lapel at some point of your fight or your career or training. So if you focus too much on the lapel, your guard might be just good if you're holding the lapel. You know what I mean? So it's very important to understand that. But it's annoying. It's very hard to deal with. You know. You, uh, you of course, had – we made a, a vlog about it, but Keenan Cornelius was training at your gym ahead of Worlds. What was it like experiencing maybe the best lapel player's guard? You know, how did, how did you deal with that? I know you guys had some fun roles. Annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough, I imagine. Oh, my God. Man. He's so good on that. He's so good and he gets the lapel so fast, you know. And then uh, it's a perfect game against my game, right? Because I do knee cut, I stay up, you know, like all he has to do it is wrap the lapel around my knee and then uh, and then go for for his game, you know. Honestly, the first time that I rode with Keenum, man, it was bad. You know, like uh, he came visit and then uh, that was not even last year, you know. That was like, uh, I think a year before, 2018. And then I rode with him. And then, man, honestly, I don't remember the last guy that came to my gym, tapped me, and then I didn't tap him. Oh, you know no. What I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, Kina came in, and then he put me on the lapel, and then I have no idea what to expect. You know, I kind of like, I was like, I'm not going to do game playing. I'm just going to let him put the lapel, and then I think I can pass. Oh, my God. He was all over me, you know, all over the whole train, you know, and then he actually tapped me on the armbar. And then, you know, like I was so tired, my leg was so tight, and I'm like, I'm going to call him out again. And then I said, man, I can't call him out today. I'm too tired. I think he's going to be worse. You know? <laughs> so we finished training, and then I'm, I asked him, like, man, when are you going to come back here? You know, like, how we need to go back, you know? So are we there, guys? We yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So you said you finished training, and then what? And then I finished training that I was so tired and I couldn't call him out for the double dip that we call, you know? Double <laughs> dip when you call the person two on the row because they smack you. Know? <laughs> so, <dip>. yeah. <laughs> Never heard that basically, one before. Basically, when the train is really tough and then you call the guy again or the guy tap you and then you want to try again, you know? Like, uh, Philippe is the king of the double dip, you know? <laughs> He goes double, triple, like he goes until he kills you, you know. <laughs> so I didn't call him and then took him one year. But then, you know, like uh, they opened my eyes for the Lapella game, you know, and I have to learn a lot about it because I, you know, like I felt that really hard to deal with, you know. But then when Kina came back, we roll a lot. We have a lot of fun, you know. And then uh, I learned a lot, you know, like I train with the best uh, one bar player, you know. And then now when people can play with me and then, you know, like nothing that surprised me anymore. You know, I rode with Kina for like a month. So thanks for him. I learned a lot about bomb guard. So I learned to understand like the concepts. It helped me a lot, but it's still very hard to deal with. You know, you know, I think, uh, you know, I have some good words with Kina, but man, it was annoying. You know? 
they got the guy. It's, it's really good. Uh, oh. Go ahead. We've been talking a lot about about technical stuff, but uh, I want to take this conversation with Keenan a bit further. You know, he, but when he was at your gym, he was without a team and kind of freelance. Of course, he's gone on to found his own team since then. But what do you think about people cross training? You just said you train with Braguinha, who's of course on, on Atos. You know, um, that's something that's that's becoming more acceptable. Is that a good thing to you that people can do this and, and train with people outside of their academy, outside of their associations? Uh, well, uh, you know, like if you see this, like. Uh, I used to train judo back in the day, you know, and then uh, sometimes, like, uh, before a tournament, all the teams, they'll go train in the same place, you know, and then they exchange information, they will train with each other, and then they go down and they compete. Jiu-Jitsu, it's most like because of, like, a lot of rivalry back in the day, you know, like, uh, this thing, Creonte, no Creonte. I believe that if you respect your academy, like, for the you know, he, you know, he has no academy, and then... Man, I love to train with different train partners. You know, I'm at the point of my career that I'm not going to fight those guys no more. You know, I'm not going to fight Kina. I'm not going to fight Braguinha. I'm not going to fight uh, Maragalli. You know, like, uh, I'm not going to fight. So if I have a chance to roll with these guys and then I miss it, you know, especially the way that I still can actually do it uh, in a high level, I'll never know how they feel to train with the, the best guys on the moment, you know. I know I have Philippe, I have Gabriel, I have Edwin, I have Victor, Trovo. But, you know, like, uh, we all together this all the time. It's good to actually cross-train a little bit, you know, like, uh, if the, if, if someone respects your team, they respect your train partner, I don't think there's a problem. You know, like, uh, so that's the way that I think, you know, like, uh, a lot of the guys from my school, from my team, they don't do that, you know, like, they only train. And then I respect that too, but uh, I like me. I like to travel, train with different guys, you know. I love that, you know, I love the guys come to my school and then I do the first row with him. I have so many guys. I had Lovato, Cyborg, Kina, Braguinha. Braguinha was uh, actually from Law when he came in. Okay, I have, yeah. uh, I have uh, who else? Uh, Braguinha, uh, Durinho, Bruno Frazado, uh, John Combs always come here, train, spend like he has a family here. Uh, Craig Jones always come here when he's in California. Well, man, so many guys, you know, they come to my school and then uh, we have fun, we exchange uh, uh, techniques, we roll, you know. Even uh, back in the day, Gary Tony spent like uh, one month in my school, you know, so when he was a brown belt. And then uh, he was still trying to like compete with the gear, stuff like that. He came in, spent one month on the, on the academy, you know, so a lot of people has, uh, has stopped by and train and then we have a good time, you know. Amilo, since uh, it was pretty interesting hearing your description uh, training with Keenan, what it was like, I'd like to uh, name off some of your old uh, old rivals back in the day and uh, have you describe what it felt like competing with them and like what what you were thinking before and after and and just what it felt like squaring up with them. Is that is that all right? Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm going to start off with uh, somebody that you fought a very long time ago, who's uh, famous now from MMA, Damian Maya. What was it like when you used to compete against Damian Maya? Man, you know, <laughs> Damian Maia, he's this lick, you know, like, uh, he doesn't look strong, but he's very strong. And then, uh, man, he's a very technical guy, you know. He, you know, like, for example, I fought Damian Maia at Pan Am's, and I know everything that Damian Maia was good at, you know. And then even that, we have a good, uh, crazy war, you know, like, I think it was 10 to 10, and then referee decision, my first uh, uh, jiu-jitsu match with Damian. And then uh, it was a sweep back and forth. I have to, like, put all my sweeps. I sweep him, like, five different time, different uh, sweeps. He swept me exactly the same way five times. On the hook, actually. <laughs> On the hook, single leg, take it out. And then, you know, like, for five times. So I learned a lot about, you know, because, you know, like, uh, I, it was my best move, knee cut, and then he was sweeping me. And then, uh, then we fought again one month after on Brazil Nationals, absolute. And then he beat me right for the decision again. So then he scored two zero on me. And then uh, I was like, the next day, I knew that I was going to face him again on the same final of the weight. And then uh, I was like, I couldn't sleep at night, you know. I was uh, with, my, with my friend, uh, Philippe's brother, actually, you know, Philippe Previsa's brother. Uh, he's, uh, a lot of people don't know this guy, but man. He's a uh, he's a uh, one of the best guys that I ever trained in my life. His uh, his name is Augusto. His, his nickname is Chuchico. 
uh, and then uh, man, he's amazing comparator. And then man, we were planning what I was gonna do to the fight the whole night until we came up to a different grip and a different approach. And then uh, it did guide me to the to the submission the next day, you know. So it was amazing to compete someone with that caliber back in the day. And then another thing, Damian Maya, I think he beat every single one of my teammates for my team, the best ones, you know. So I, I need the revenge, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> I love Damian Maya, you know, big respect for him, but I need that win, you know. So it was pretty nice. And then uh, I learned a lot, a lot. You know, like I improved so so much after I competed with MMI and then uh, and then man, you know, like I just uh, have good things to talk about that guy. I'm a big fan of him too, you know. So, so you fought uh, both the Habero brothers, both Solo and Zanji, throughout your career. Went back and forth with both of them. Uh, maybe let's uh, start with Solo. What was it like competing against Solo? Man, Solo, it's a, it's a very strategy guy, you know. Like uh, he's so good on that, you know. Like uh, he knows when is the time to explode. He's always the time to do the defense. Uh, I grew up like uh, watching Salo and then I kind of like uh, at one time, you know, it was a blue belt and then I was in a tournament and then Salo was fighting final for world championship. And then I told my my train partners, you know, I said, man, one day I'll be facing this guy and then I'll beat him, you know. And then all my train partners, they laugh at me, man, you're crazy. Just a juvenile blue belt. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, man, I just have the feeling, you know. And then... Uh, yeah, and then I compete with Saulo, and then, uh, man, you know, like, I, I won, but I think uh, Saulo, it was more like a competing for fun, you know? I don't think that I fought Saulo on uh, on his prime that he was only a competitor, you know? Like, I fought Saulo when he was competing for fun, and then uh, I think competing probably to inspire, like, inspire other guys, inspire, like, his brother Shanji, you know? So, and then it was my time to... To kind of like a coming in and then uh you know be the next guy and then so that happened to me too when i fight i believe leandro law you know so and then it's gonna happen to leandro law i think i already happened to kinda and someone's gonna be come in and then beat kinda but uh man very tough guy and then uh you know true legend and then a true samurai of the jiu-jitsu you know so both of these guys you know i fought him no get you he beat me adcc you know so i was actually winning the whole fight and then I was pushing the pace, pushing the pace, and then he was more like conserver. And then 10 seconds left, he just jumped and then passed my guard. I recovered like barely, like he barely touched on my side and hold me and I recovered the guard. And then he won the fight. He only did 10 seconds. The whole fight, he just did one move. And then right after the fight, and then he told me, hey, bro, lesson learned. You relax. Don't ever relax up, you know. Do I ever relax on a fight? And then I'm like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> what about his brother? You fought his brother a few times too. How, how'd that go? Oh, man, that's like me and Judge, we have also some, some you know, like great match, you know, like we fought a lot. I don't even, I don't, I don't even remember, you know, but uh, we fought, you know, but I think the most important ones, it was the ones on the world championship, you know. So basically, fought Shanji. And it was one of my first big matches, a black belt. And then uh, I learned so much with this match, you know. I was actually winning the fight, you know. I was kind of like a control in the fight, you know. And then, um, and then you know, like a Shanji try a sweep. And then I'm like, you know, I just came in, brown belt, submitting everybody. You know, like I want to tap the legend, you know. So I tried to go for a toho or a leg lock. I don't know. And then Shanji defend, and then he just... Defend and then go right into like a kind of like a, this half guard that you like out crush, and then he Zeke out choke me, you know. <laughs> but even that I lost that fight, you know, like I kind of like knew it that I belonged there. I made a small mistake, but you know I was going toe to toe with the with the, you know, like with the crew. The, he won the absolute that year, and then I went toe to toe with him, and then I'm like, man, I belong here, and then uh, yeah, let's see what's gonna happen next year. So 2007, then we compete. Then uh, I took him out of the final of the absolute, and then uh, you know, like I, I I beat him. So 2009, I don't think he competed. In 2010, we face again, and then this year I got really upset with the IBJJF, you know, because 
they they didn't even mention my name you know like they made a a trough to roger and uh uh to roger and uh uh Shanji because like they are way like oh it's gonna be these guys on the final and then one of them is gonna win and then they're gonna have like the first guy to win three times absolute world champion and then man i want to spoil the party so bad you know <laughs> so i want to take both out you know so i took shanja out and then i was really confident that it was going to be my time to beat uh Roger too, you know but unfortunately nobody you know like i i actually i was competing with no acl for nine months you know i didn't want to like have a surgery and then when i fight the uh, uh tasses on the final you know like i got this knee bar position and my knee like i tried to defend and my knee just pop out the place you know so then i couldn't fight on the final of the absolute but man you know like uh it was a tough match as always you know like uh by i think i it was by advantage and then uh but Shanji still got better off me he tapped me so <laughs> you know like uh, my wins you know like it's just a good wins because it was like same final of the absolute you know so that, he could that... actually have won like a two more titles because it's, it, i feel that he really knew how to fight Sh uh Hodger, you know yeah that that leads uh perfectly into the next person i want to ask about uh Hodger, who who uh he was your teammate at gracie baja back then but you guys used to fight each other how did that work yeah, out I you, don't... you guys never wanted to close out or do you guys used to train together or how did it work out we don't like to close out you know i don't like to close out you know like he doesn't like to close out you know like i i only close out with my students you know so i don't fight my students but uh i fought many teammates you know I, I didn't only fight, fought Braulio because I think uh, I live in Braulio's house, you know, like uh, we, we, are, we are very close, you know, like a brother. So the only guy that's like not my student, my teammate that I didn't fight was him. I fought his brother, Victor. I fought Otavio. I fought uh, Flavio Almeida. I fought Jerry. I fought everyone on my team, you know, because I feel that both of us want to win, you know. And then uh, when you close out, it's one first, one second. You know, and then you don't have the feeling of fight in the final. So when I fought Roger, and then when it was the time that uh, that I was gonna fight for, I'm back, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, when you <laughs> fought Roger, that's when we lost you. So when I fought Roger, it was a very interesting story, you know, like uh, because I came in, you know, like, and then I told Draculino, I say, Draculino, I don't mind to be like a Gracie Barra BH and then fight for the B team for Gracie Barra. But I really want to do the absolute, you know. So please, don't uh, tell Carlinhos and then, uh, you know, Carlinhos Grace, Master Carlinhos. And Jacqueline, you tell him. So I arrived here in the United States, in California. My friend Piano picked me up on the airport, drove me to train at headquarters, Gracie Barra. And then I told Carlinhos, Carlinhos, I just arrived, you know, I probably need to probably roll light, right? And he's like, oh, okay. So I have to roll with back to back to Flavio Almeida, Otávio Souza, Braulio Stima, Kyron Gracie, Victor Stima, and Roger Gracie. Man. Right off, off the plane. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, so then, you know, like when I finish the train, and then I, you know, like I begin to tell him, hey, Carlinhos, and then, uh, oh, when I start to talk to him, and he just told me, hey, you and Roger, he's going to represent Gracie Barra on the absolute. And then I was like, whoa, okay, I didn't even need to tell him, you know, so... It was like something that I uh, was confident that I'm going to do well. So I shook uh, Roger's grace hands and I said, I see you on the final. And then Roger always like with this smile, he's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know, like I don't, I don't think like a lot of people didn't believe that I'm going to make it, you know, but uh, man, if you go back then and you, you run it back on my, uh, on my absolute uh, world championship back in the day, it was it was crazy run up, you know. I always fought, fought the toughest guys. I always submit most of the guys, and then uh, you know, like uh, I think Kalius believed me. You know, he felt the energy. He felt that, uh, you know, like I was never scared of nobody. You no, know, when I was young, you know, like uh, when they used to make the brackets, Jacqueline used to ask me, "Man, we're gonna make the brackets. Who you like to face?" I'm like, I always go like this, please, Jacqueline, don't ask me this question. You know, like. Uh, if I ask to fight someone, I'm already losing my mind, you know. Put some, anyone, you know. So, like, uh, it was crazy to face Roger now, you know, like, uh, but 
definitely we never want to close out and then we never talk about close out you know so we train together we spar many many times and then uh you know like uh i knew that i could beat him i knew whoever imposed the game was gonna win he imposed his game better than me and he won both you know but uh yeah it's like uh you know, like that's uh, pretty much the way that we thought about, you know, how you hate close out, you know, so if you ask him. <laughs> Do you think Carlinhos had you spar those guys off the plane as a sort of a tryout to see if he was going to give you the, the absolute spot? 100%, you know, 100%. Carlinhos did, uh, when I moved to California, Carlinhos used to actually uh, uh, run the competition training and it was amazing. Man, he knows a lot about competition. He knows a lot about you know, like a mindset, you know, like a, he's like, <laughs> he's so smart, you know, so I have the blast to train him a couple of times and then, uh, and then, you know, like for sure was a trials, you know, like there is no way, you know, like he's like, okay, let's see if you have what it takes, you know, so, and then uh, I think I did well, you know, I remember every role, I remember every role, you know, and then uh, I don't think I lost one, you know, so on that day, but uh, so he's like, you win. You know, so gave me a lot of confidence to Carlinhos Grace tell me that as well. You know, uh, he chose me between a lot of like a guy that was a way ahead of me and then I have to represent, you know. What's it like uh, rolling and competing against uh, Hadra? Because it seems very frustrating. It seems like he doesn't really make mistakes. I mean, he's a little bit bigger than you. Like, how did it feel? How did his grips and his pressure and all that? Uh, how does that feel like rolling against, you know, probably the greatest of all time in Hadra? Oh, man, you know, like... Uh, you know, like when you roll with someone for so many times, you kind of know what his strength and then what his weakness, you know, like uh, you know how to, you need to try to point his weakness, you know what I mean? But uh, it's very hard to do with someone on like Roger, you know, he has, like everybody has the weakness, you know, like uh, he has his weakness, but it's just hard to put him on the, his weak spot, you know? So on the training, probably he was not going hundred percent. He was actually involved as well. Sometimes I was able to do so, but uh, on a competition, I never actually had the chance to put him on the spot that I wanted to, you know. So, on my last fight with him, you know, I was able to hold him, and then I knew that I would be able to hold him until the end of the fight, but I would lose because he's so patient and then he's so resilient on his position, you know what I mean? He would stay on the position and she would try to move, and then he moved to a better position. Like, for example, I cannot do that. I have to move to my better position. I have to force the person. So that you make mistakes. Roger, you want. You know what I mean? I just saw Roger roll with Philippe like a life on the front of me. And then I just had like flashbacks on my mind to feel the same thing that I see Philippe feeling. You know, so <laughs> it's still the same, you know, and then uh it it was it sucks. <laughs> it's, you know, like uh, he doesn't give you no space. He makes almost no mistakes when he's playing top game. And then, uh, man, you know, like, and then when he's getting you in a bad position, he's going to tap you. He's not going to lose it. You know, for sure, best of all the time, hands down. So you said uh, you wanted to uh, watch the, uh, when I asked you about clips, you actually, something that surprised me was you said Leandro from 2016 Pans, right? That's one you wanted to watch with us? Oh, I think we cut you out a little hey. bit here. Let's see if he comes back. Yeah, Yo, you there? Um, yeah. <laughs> so you wanted you wanted to watch the Leandro match, right? I think the other one was a pretty funny one in 2016. Yeah. This is this, this is something that interested me from because you ended up you you lose this match, correct? You, yeah, but yeah. Usually everyone always wants to watch matches they win. Let's let's watch this one with you and hear you, hear you talk about it a little bit. Yeah, people just want to do the. They want to win, but it's fun to watch the one that you lose, you know. Then you study, <laughs> then you get better. So, what's it like with Leandro? I mean, how many times did you fight Leandro in your career? I fight him two times and two two wars gym. <laughs> two times on the tournament and then two times in the gym. You know, and then I lost it out. <laughs> you lost in the, you lost in the gym too. <laughs> I lost that too. Man, Buchecha was on here the other day talking about Le training with Leandro, how, how hard it is. What's it like training yes. with him? It's like exactly the, the way that you compete with him. <laughs> he pulls guard, and then, uh, you know, like, uh, it's exactly that we do on the train, too, you know. 
when you do well on top and then he feel that you can put him in danger, he would get up, you know? Yeah, he stands up. Uh, he stands up, you know, like uh, he did a good grip on me here, the way that I couldn't knee caught right away because of that grip. If I knee caught, I would expose my left leg to X guard. You know, like he did a very deep grip on that pen, on the on the on that leg, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. he knew it. He knew it because if he had the pen, the pen, the grip there, and then I tried to knee caught right away, he would get under pretty easy because you know, like uh, I wouldn't have the right pressure right there. Yeah, because so, he used to he used to always play with the pen grip. So you think he did that grip to counter your knee slide? For sure. Yeah. Okay. He knew what to expect, you know. And then here he's lifting his leg, but he's really good defense on the double under. I didn't even try to do that, you know. So he's not letting me get to the collar grip, as you can see. Look, he's you see, like I'm trying to get on the collar because if I get him on the collar, I can make him sit and then I can knee cut, you know. But like I cannot knee cut when his back is flat on the ground with that grip. So what are so, you looking to do right here, Hamala? What what would be your goal right now? My goal was to be grab the the, the collar grip. Okay, so look now when I start to do that, look now he's gonna surprise me. Look, he's gonna double leg me. Boom. Yeah, classically Andrew right there. <laughs> yeah, and and then I try over plata, something that I really do it, and then I got him on the over plata, but he's so flexible, he pull out the over plata pretty easy, you know. So and then he scored the two points. So that double leg, I knew it, I knew it. Don't give him the space to back up because he's very explosive, and then he still hit the double leg, you know, and then. Uh, Another mistake that I did in the fight, you know, actually that's the first mistake that I did, you know, the first uh, first seconds I was doing pretty well, you know, uh, asking like a chase uh, uh, question, you know, like I was trying to get him on the collar grip, as you see, he's flat on the back, and then he has a very deep, like a De La Riva grip, right, and then if I try to knee cut, he get under me pretty easy, mm -hmm. so I have to make a grip on the collar, make him sit, when I make him sit, automatic, his hands going to go high on my knee, not gonna be my ankle. Ah, okay. And bring him back and cut the knee through, you know. But he never allowed me to do that. So here I'm playing my guard, you know. Uh, I don't feel that he actually. I think he did it. Try to pass my guard once, you know, like uh, he really engaged, and then a very fast and then timing position. He's not like a guy that put a pressure. He's a guy that using the timing when you try to do something, you know. So here I'm playing the guard. I'm very concerned about switch grips to be honest with you because like i said look he's he's going but like he still have a good grip good guard rotation you know like uh, he just tried to throw my leg by we're gonna get an interesting point of the position yeah uh, right now Ooh. he almost did that, nice, you know? knee so, nice knee slide attempt there if you go back look how he used the timing no Can we pressure go back a few? yeah here we go so look when he get off my grip okay now look he's gonna go back right I have no grip. He's going to jump in to the knee cut. I have no spider guard grip. Look, as I try to set up right now, I try to set up. Look, boom, he jumped right knee through. Cut. Yeah. Uh, so, timing, you know, so then I was able to recover. And then uh, now I'm actually going to get under him. That's a nice a nice entry there from spider guard to the X. Yeah, that's one of my main positions, you know, like I get on the knee to the X guard. And then uh, something that he does too, you know, so. Yeah, making the grip on the collar, you know, but he's being very active with this knee would prevent me to get the omoplata, prevent me to get the uh, triangles, you know, doing a good job now, on that. Too. This is one of your trademark positions right here, the spider guard with the hand on the same side collar. Exactly, yep. This so is... Are you, are you more comfortable here than with double uh, sleeve grips? Because you really have a lot of success from this position. Yeah, this position is more like a attack position. Double sleeve is more like a defensive position. You know, like it's more like a guard retention. It's not like he can do like some triangles or more pass, but it's very easy for the guy on top to to actually, if they don't want to engage, to to not like a get into position. Or you know? like the collar grip, you're actually able to bring the guy to the game. You know, so you you see like I'm gonna get under him again on the with that grip. You know, like a. And then I'm going to set up X guard, and it's going to be a good point to study, you know? So they give us they give us penalty, you know, like not doing much there. <laughs> Rodrigo Tochi in there. I used to train with him in Rio. That's the ref. My guard was open, but it's it's tough, you know, like to fight Leandro Law because you like, he's expecting you to attack him, to count you. So I'm going to get under him, and then uh, 
I, I choose this this fight to to actually study, you know, like because Fernando Lot do something very interesting on the X card, and then uh, I came up with something after this with a lot of actually answers for for this position right after this match, you know, because he did a very good counter that people can actually learn from that. But I actually do that too. Philippe does that too, you know. I think they all learn with Lot. You try leg drag again, but like not really actually engage, you know, like that. I don't quite remember, but I know that I'm going to be with the ex card. I try oh, Omoplata again. Try Omoplata, yeah. But he's, he's, he's so flexible doing like a kind of like arch his back and then yeah. pull his arm, you know. If you guys remember when Kina fly triangle him, you know, like yeah, the yeah. way that he escaped, you know, exactly the same way. Yeah, uh, Omoplata too. I remember I I uh, watched him escape Omoplata's from Otavio like three three times in the, in, the, in the same match, and I, I based I I've defended Omoplata's the same. But Leandro's just like impossible to Omoplata. It seems like. Yep, this is true. You know, it's yeah. very hard. You know, he he arches back and pull his arm like so yeah. easy. You know. So right here, you got double sleeves now. Is that and then you putting that leg? Yeah, don't. Dobo is leaving, you know, like that actually a good position here to try to sweep, but I couldn't got like a, it's like a, if you, you put like a the spider lasso and then with a De La Riva, you know, like if I, if I can put my De La Riva hook there, that's a good sweep to the other side, you know, sometimes work well. I think it got penalty again, huh? Yeah, I got another oh, penalty. And we both stalling that. And then I'm losing. It's good for law only. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but like you said, you got to be careful, right? Because if you open up against Leandro, he tries to time it and then hit those Torianos and knee slides as soon as you go for something, huh? Exactly. What See, do you like he's not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking here now? What do you what do you what are you going to try and set up here? You think when you're in this I'm, position? I'm actually trying to set up like a my De La Riva behind his back, behind like a lasso oh. with the. Yeah. Oh man, he's yeah. Now I think I set up the Get X, to the guard. X yeah. guard. Oh, that was a nice recovery there. Almost passed yeah. into, your, into your X card. Look at this, man. This is one of my best position. Look what Leandro did. So if you see here, he never let go my pen grip. I was stuck on this position because of this pen grip for the whole time. So basically here, I need that leg that, right? I'm trying to actually kick him and come up on kind of like a double leg, yeah. holding both off like the pen grip. But I need my leg, right? My left leg, I need as a post leg to do like a technical stand-up, right? So he never let go the leg, so I'm with the position set up, he's posting his hand, his other hand, all the way back that, the other side, which he has a very good balance. You know, like uh, here, you know, like without my leg, I can't sweep him. Look, look, see, like I'm trying to break the grip, like try to rotate and push him, but he won't let go. He's keeping base into the other side. And then he did that for pretty much like the whole end of the fight i have the setup you know but there's nothing that i can do here to sweep him the way that i want to with this grip you know so and then you see like he's pulling his leg if i try to cycle his leg on the back i can't too because i don't have my leg free you know so yeah, and he's, man, he's, le he's just, leaning so far to the left that you can't take him over to his right so you need exactly. to stand up. yeah exactly i need i need to stand up you know so here like like i said you know like Man, how frustrating was that in the moment? You must have been getting really tired, struggling. Yeah, look, now I almost look, but look, you can't look. You see, I try to push him like, yo, he has his poster hand, and then don't let go of that pain grip, you know? Oh, man. So, yeah, it was first date, you know, and then right after that. So what you should know, you have I, done, though? What should you have done here, Hamila? I should have changed. I, have, I, should, I should have changed the approach, you know? Like, yeah. for example, now I know. Now there's a position... You know, composition that uh, I came up, you know, like with Brower and Philippe, you know, one of the positions, there will be this hand here that I have, my X guard, go there and then grab, like the one that I hold his leg, grab his sleeve. You know what I mean? If I grab his sleeve with that grip, then I can go with my other hand instead of grabbing the pen grip, grabbing the collar. You know, if I grab the collar, then now I have the, uh, the lever to break the grip, you know, like if I can grab like with the with the X guard and my left hand on the sleeve, and I can kick my leg and break the grip. So then yeah, I can yeah. come up and 
in another x guard sweeps which is i would have also opportunity for triangles and normal platters see like i'm pushing him down i'm making him off balance but man that's like he without him let go this pants i can't get on top you know his balance so, is so good too his balance is just like his balance is good too yeah but all his balance is because of like you know like this this leg here you know so yeah so you're thinking like right here you, you're getting to like this is sort of a really powerful position uh i love having x guard with both pancreas and you're just sort of focused on finishing that but you're not focusing on breaking the grip like you didn't think till after the fight yeah no i knew that i have to break the grip but i didn't know how you know in that time yeah. now i let go the other hand and then see like my other hand is free now i can actually break this grip you know like with the other hand too if i reach my other hand with the uh with my right hand to the sleeve i also be able to break you know look i was there on this position for like four minutes you know so yeah now I try to change the approach a little bit too you know that's over yeah that's frustrating yeah you just needed to get that uh get that get that last sweep would you be open to another leandro fight if it came up uh, i know you're still doing super fights uh here and there would you be open to uh, another leandro one Nah, I would be maybe, you know, like maybe in a different room, you know, maybe submission only, something like that. But I don't know. Leonard is a cool friend of mine, you know. I don't know if I want to do a match with him, you know. He has his time. He beat me. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I just want to say hey, thanks again for breaking down that match because uh, it was really, really useful and some great details. Yeah, that was, that was one of the best breakdowns we've had, man. That was, that was a lot of great technical yeah. details. Thank you, guys. Hey, guys, can I just get my charge for my computer one second? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Um, one second. Man, we've been having a lot of fun. If you guys haven't been watching at home, all the Who's Number Ones, I invite you to take a, a look at last week's guest. We had breakdowns with a bunch of great names like Andre Galval, JT Torres, Lachlan Giles, Vuchecha. and Vuchesha. Uh They all spent uh, upwards of 15, 20 minutes or more breaking down some of their best and, and biggest matches from recent tournaments. So we're having a lot of fun doing that. I'm learning a lot, and I hope you guys have been tuning in. Uh, go ahead, just for fun, leave some names you want to see in the comments uh, that you'd love to see on the show. We're going to try and get as many people in here as we can until um, normal life resumes, whenever that might be. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, Mike and I will just have our, our regular programming like TV hosts out here. Yep, exactly. Uh, what was your favorite show so far, Michael? I, really, I like the one where everybody was calling in. We didn't do any breakdowns in that one, but the one with Mikey and Roberto. They kind of did, though. They broke down the positions a little yeah, bit, right? Yeah, well, that, was, that was fun. That was a fun time. I think, right. I, I think we have Hamilo back in the house now. I think, I, I think I'm back here, guys. Hamilo, I think it's just about time for us to get going to wrap it up. I'll, I'll give you a, a chance before we go. Get, uh, give a, a little message to your fans and to the jiu-jitsu community out there. I think uh, whatever you want to say, here's your time to go. Okay. All right, guys. I know we're all going through this time, right? But uh, I think one thing that we learn with jiu-jitsu the most is like a uh, struggle is part of the game. A struggle is part of the life. I think we have to really have a strong mind right now and the resilience of like uh, obey what people is telling us to do. Stay home if you need to stay home. Keep the gym closed. Keep social distance. And then this can pass as fast as, as possible. You know, like I'm also dying to go back in the gym, training, hang out with my students, do what we love the most. But, you know, times like this, they teach us a lot about how to deal with uh, uh, situations like that. And then... Uh, it's not going to be the, the first, not going to be the last time that you're probably going to go through like a hardships. And then uh, we just have to overcome this like we overcome all the things before and keep moving forward. I'm looking forward to go back on the gym, training, you know, like, and then, uh, you know, have a couple of super fights this year. You know, like I'm pretty bummed out that uh, I'm, I was waiting to to revenge with Calazans. And then, uh, but we will we'll, we'll run it back as soon as this all passes. Okay. Thanks for grappling. Appreciate Michael Chase. You know, you guys do an amazing job as always. Thanks for having me. I'm of like course, man. It's our episode. pleasure. Hi, Milo. Someone just jumped in the comments here on YouTube and says, ask you about getting boloed by Edwin. Did this really happen? Did Edwin Baron bolo you? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably uh, Edwin. <laughs> you know, like uh, Edwin, Edwin bring bolo me uh, once on his life. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he took my back and then he was on my back for like almost the whole round, you know, but... Thank God I was able to escape and choke him. I don't want to lose to that guy. You know? <laughs> did you did you did you double dip him for hitting the bolo? Did you double dip that time? Oh, I I double I triple dip him that day just because the fact that he almost choked me. I lo 
<laughs> Jokes aside, I love the kid, you know, but I don't want to lose to him, you know. I'm undefeated in everything. Even video game that I never play, I beat oh. him. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hamilo, guys. We have a crazy schedule this week. Tomorrow we have Bia Mesquita. Wednesday we have Gordon Ryan and uh, Craig Jones both calling in. Uh, Thursday, Kyle Terra and... Friday, Lucas Lepre. So a crazy lineup of people. Uh, thank you so much, Jaime. we got to get you on here again sometime soon. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys anytime. Thank you, okay, guys. guys. Stay have a good, safe. Have a good we'll one. see you guys later. All right, Take Caleb, care, guys. go ahead. Take care, guys.